Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be unboxing a doodle crate. And I'm very excited to film this video because my daughter is very excited to do this. This month the Tinker Crate got here at a different time than the Doodle Crate and so she was upset that her and her brother didn't get to do them at the same time <laughs> because he got to do his before her. So she was a little sad about that. So she was like, are you gonna film the video so I can do it? So here we are, we're filming the video. <laughs> so if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to do unboxings like we're doing today and to show you some different homeschool curriculum that we use, organizational ideas, and just ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button. And let's open this box. And I'm totally gonna butcher the name on this. I have no idea how to say Sum Sumai, maybe. There you go, you can see it. So maybe you know how to say it better than I do, but paintings. So create two ink wash masterpieces and sign your work with a handmade chop stamp. So this sounds really interesting. I saw a picture of it and it kind of reminds me of like Mulan, the art, the painting at the beginning. That's what it reminds me of. So when we open it up, this is what it looks like on the top. So these are our instructions. And they'll go through, this is a panda, if you couldn't tell when it was turned sideways, it was kind of hard to tell, but now that it's the right way, it's a panda. <laughs> and so it has some different pictures. It also usually gives a little bit of history about where this comes from and things like that and tells supplies that you need to use and then gives ideas of things that, other ideas, so they don't, and not everyone's make a panda, <laughs> but they can make their own thing or it gives you some other ideas of things you could make. If that all makes sense, I just said the same thing over and over again. So this is the ink. This is a cool little container right there for this special type of painting that I cannot say. And then it has this little container right here to put the paint in, I guess, I'm not really sure. And then we have this. I don't even know what this is. This is really soft and velvety, this green part. And then this is paper. So I don't know, I think this is this thing right here. It's gonna roll out like that. I actually have some of these. I spent time in China teaching English um, for like four months when, like years ago, <laughs> when I was like 20. And so I have a few of these actually in real life. So maybe I'll show them to you at the end of the video if I remember. So that looks like what this is gonna be. She can hang it up later because these are the, the dowels for that probably. And then the really long paintbrush. So I don't know if we can, Oh, I also have paints that look like this and I, it's probably a similar type of painting technique that this is using. I'm not positive, but I bought them when I was in China and I don't really use them that much, but they're more decoration. So I'll show that to you as well. So if people are more familiar with this than me, they can let me know if, that, if they're the same thing, but the paintbrush looks similar. It's very stiff. So it'll just, it'll be interesting to see how this all works because I haven't ever had instructions on how to use these paintbrushes. And then these are little sponges and I don't know what the things on top are, but the pink thing is a sponge. And then we have a cube. That's probably, it said we were gonna make a stamp, right? So maybe that's what that's for. There's some droppers in here and a little stamp like ink pad right there. If you can see that, the light's kind of glaring on it. And then tape, usually they send this so you can like tape things down and not have it wiggling all around. So that's some tape and then again, just another a cloth to keep stuff from getting messy. And then the paper, they give several, so that's good because <laughs> they know we're gonna make mistakes. <laughs> so they give us several pieces of paper and that's what's in this crate. So I'm excited for her to try this out and just to see how it all goes because I just don't really know how, like what to expect from this and how it's all gonna work. So I'm gonna let her add it and we will let you know how it goes.
Hi, so Alana just finished her doodle crate. We think it's Sumai painting. Not 100% positive, but it was a lot of fun. And she's gonna show you some of her artwork. So we'll show you the finished products first and then some of the practice things. So do you wanna help me hold these up? Okay, turn it around so they can see. So we have this one. So you get to make two like completely finished products. So this is a cat. So she followed some of the examples in the book. And then this one is a bird. And you can see her little chop stamp, I think is what it's called. It's like your signature, your autograph basically on it. So these were a lot of fun and I think we had fun. What was your favorite part? Um, uh, designing the pictures. Designing the pictures. That was a lot of fun, huh? And you got to practice a lot. So here's, they give you a ton of practice paper. So she practiced a lot on these pages using the paintbrush and just getting kind of feel for an ink. What's this supposed to be? A pizza. A pizza. You can kind of see the separate pieces, see? And um, she was worried that the ink wasn't gonna dry lighter because she mixed water to try to get a gray color, but it did. When it dried, it looks lighter, so that's good. And then this was mine. <laughs> I practiced making a bird. <laughs> so, and then she had, what was this one? Bunny? An Easter bunny. The Easter bunny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then there's so still nice. a whole bunch. So this was practicing some different stamps that she was making, but then there's still a whole bunch of paper here and a lot of ink left. So you could still keep painting if you wanted to. What do you think was the hardest part? Uh, trying to like make the paintings look just right. Like. <laughs> so getting the paintings just right, that's hard, right? You have to practice to try to get better. Something else that I thought was difficult that might require a couple people to do was just putting these together. So the biggest reason why is because they were rolled up. So every time you would try to like lay them flat, they just roll back up. So she would hold them down. We tried taping the red one down as well. So that helped a little bit having it taped down. And then she would hold one while I put these little glue dots, which I thought were so cool. I don't know if I've ever seen glue dots before, but those were really fun. So we had some extra of those, but so she helped with that. And then as well, when we put on the little metal, the dowels and rolled them up. So I feel like that was kind of the hardest part for at least me, I don't know. And so it requires a, maybe a couple people to do it. Or if you thought ahead of time, you could lay these out and flatten them under books for a few days before you actually do the project. Cause then maybe they would lie flatter for you. And then do you want to hold up your stamp? So this was the stamp that she made. It's an A, cause her name is Alana. And so she did that. She did another one first and didn't like it as much. So we ripped it off. It gives you a few of these little foam pads you can make them in. So we ripped it off and we tried again. And with the ink pad, it's the ink pad's small. So it's easier to rub the ink pad on this than to try to stamp this in the ink pad. And one other thing I thought was cool, I had mentioned in the intro, this little fuzzy, I was not sure what it is but it's actually, uh, I don't know what it's like water paper, I guess is I think what they call it. So you write on this side and it turns black, but then after it dries, then it goes away. <laughs> so they can practice. You could use this for your toddler when you're done with this crate, if you wanted to. So that was really cool. And that's what this little fuzzy part is. So they had you start off practicing with that. And then you, then you moved on to harder things. <laughs> So I was just gonna hold up some of my paints that I had gotten. So these were some things I actually got in China. I think it's the same type of painting. The brushes look very similar. So it was in this case and then a whole bunch of brushes. <laughs> Alana wants to see. So you see all the different brushes right here, varying sizes. This one, you have to mix the paint yourself. So I'm glad in this crate it came already mixed. So you have this little tray and you put water in it and then you have to scrape it with the color. So I have colored ones and a bunch of black ones. So these are just like little sticks and you pull them out and they look really cool. So I just use them for decoration, not to actually paint. And then you have to scrape them on this tray once it has some water in it like this, and then you get the color. So I thought this was a really cool craft because it taught something culturally about another place. And so I really enjoyed that and thought that was a lot of fun. So are we excited for next month? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> so please give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing these videos and we will see you next time.